Beyond the Gate, our Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood podcast. I'm Megan. And I'm Meg. And today we are talking about episode 33, The Northern Wall of Briggs, and we couldn't be happier. Yes. So excited. <laughs> uh, in this episode, the frigid northern borderlands become a battlefield when Kim Lee finally closes in on Scar. Deeper into the frozen wasteland, Ed and Al's fight is against the bitter elements as they struggle to reach Fort Briggs. Yep. And this Dude, I episode... almost read it as butter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, go ahead. Um, this episode covers chapters 64, The Northern Wall of Briggs, and 65, The Ironclad Rule. Okay, let's jump right into it. Kimberly has stopped um a train on the tracks and they're they're searching it and they're trying to figure out which direction Scar and his companion went. They noted that Scar stopped leaving clues to where he is going, um, but there is a road that leads north that was near um, near the train tracks, and so Kimberly is is following the path. But then the road is um, they come to a like an avalanche of sorts in the in the path, and Kimberly like picks up a rock and on. On the one side of it, there's, like, transmutation. Uh, yeah, I'm so glad they keep bringing this up, because there was an episode where Ed mentioned seeing transmutation marks, too. But it's not just a stylistic thing for the animation to let the audience know that alchemy happened. It's actually something that shows up in the world. So you can tell when something's been transmuted. It's kind of, like, mm, kind of blocky. There's, like, mm-hmm. pieces jutting out, usually. You know what it kind of reminds me of? What? <laughs> Pinata. Like the Yeah, the little... yeah, little tassel things on pinatas. That's a good yeah. way that's a good description. I couldn't really do it justice. That's <laughs> that's good imagery, yeah. Um and so Kimberly figured out that Scar Scar is the one who actually blocked the path, so he decides that they are heading north and they're gonna follow him there. And then we see uh the Elrics arrive in the north. Yeah, it's a cute little scene when they get off the train. It's actually a scene that I haven't seen. Like, I haven't read it in the manga. So I don't think, I think it's an anime original. And usually I'm kind of mad when they add unnecessary things. But this one I really liked. So Mm -hmm. I'm glad they put it in. Yeah, it was, it was so cute. They're, they're running out of the train station and they're like so excited to see snow. Um, and Ed has his, his usual red, um coat is lined with fur um for the for the winter elements um and he he immediately slips slips down the stairs and al's like stop don't be so clumsy um and then we see the brothers reminiscing about a, a heavy snow that happened in risen bull and it's pretty it, it, this whole scene is just so so heartwarming um they we see them like transmuting a snowman and then al like totally pelting ed with a snowball in the face um, yeah <laughs> yeah um and then they run off again and al is al is warning ed like don't fall again you're, you know you're so clumsy and it's just very sweet there you you're reminded that they're just kids yeah um, this watching this reminded me of something that happened uh in college there was a girl who she was from i think texas so she had never really she'd never experienced a snowfall and um obviously where we went we went to school the snow is <laughs> constant so the first snowfall happened in october i think even and everyone like I-, I don't know when i see snow falling it's too pretty for me to be mad unless it's like april and we're getting a blizzard and then i'll mm. be mad but everyone else was outside and they're just like ugh, snow gross and she's just looking up in awe and wonder she's like guys can we build a snowman i want to make a snow angel this is so pretty and she's just like gasping and so you could see excitement in her eyes and it made me think we take this for granted that we get the the beauty of snow Mm -hmm. it's so beautiful mid-april but it's there's there's charm to it and i'm glad i do live in a climate that gets snow yeah same (laughs) (laughs) that's cute then we we go back to a, a not not so cute scene. Um, Kimberly is still he's um, chasing after Scar. 
Scar has been spotted at a train stop and Kimley decides he's going to go after him alone. Um, he, he says he doesn't want you people getting in the way. I hate when people say you people. I think it's yeah. very, uh, demeaning. Yeah. 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 Um, and we, we see Scar and a man in a trench coat on a train and Scar kind of sits up and he senses something. Um, and he looks out and doesn't see anybody but then a train comes up next to them and we see Kimberly is on it and he jumps onto the train um which is honestly very impressive yeah i would just die I'd be a bug on a windshield yeah <laughs> um Kimberly comes up behind the man that's in the trench coat and we finally see who it is and it is yoki which <laughs> i was so shocked by this uh, <laughs> yeah, it's great because all the description they got was that Scar was traveling with a middle-aged man with black hair, which is either mm-hmm. Yoki or Marco. And the manga panel where the reveal happens is hilarious because you just see Yoki kind of looking freaked out because Kimberly's caught up to him. And then Kimberly's face is just like blank, slightly annoyed. And in the background it says, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> he almost looks borderline disgusted in a way. It's, it's really funny. <laughs> Honestly, I think Yoki is like the most useless character. He doesn't really have a purpose. <laughs> no. <laughs> Except, well, he he did serve a purpose here. He, yeah. Uh, He's the decoy. Yes. He's the greatest decoy. <laughs> 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 okay. Anyway, Scar comes up behind Kimberly and attacks him, um, and. This is when Scar and Kimmy like really get a good look at each other and they recognize each other. Yeah. There's it's a really cool scene because the the lighting shifts, the moon comes out, and you can see the shadows as the train passes through. So like it, the light is filtering slowly. And when um the scene finally lights up, Scar and Kimberly's eyes meet and they just grow wide because there's recognition. And um, Kimberly is true to his word because he remembers all the faces of the people he's encountered. And mm-hmm. he would he would never forget Scar or his family. Yeah. Um, and then the, a, f- a fight ensues. And it's, it's kind of funny because Yoki's just like at the mercy of their fighting and <laughs> <laughs> Megan Megan got a chuckle out of it. <laughs> it's it is it is kind of funny. He's like, should I should I how do I should get away? Try from jumping this? off of this yeah. train that's going probably like a hundred miles per hour. <laughs> yeah. Um but then I don't know, the fight ends pretty quickly because Scar he throws a pipe at Kimberly and like gets him in the gut. Oh look, I've been impaled. Yes, <laughs> and Scar is about to, you know, deal the final the final blow, and Kimberly separates the the train cars and like causes a huge explosion. Um, and this causes the conductors to stop the train, and they find Kimberly, and he is very upset with them. He tells them to keep going. Um, and so they leave. They leave Scar and Yoki behind on the separated train cars yeah that was an intense scene that ended like very anticlimactically almost because (laughs) kimberly was just immediately taken out but we can talk more on that later i think i made a note of it at the end okay yeah and then we see finally see uh marco now that we know that he's with may they are um in the north and they're searching for scars brother's research notes um and uh, i don't know it's it's an interesting scene because marco we see his face uh, you know scar disfigured it last time and he's saying uh, his face hurts and may's like apologizes and like i I wish i could have done more to help you and what and what he says i don't know it kind of made me sad he's he says like no it's fine it's it's a face a man like me deserves to wear and then they they see the the brig mountain that borders um drachma which basically all they say about drachma is that it's a big country um that they're always at war with i guess yes yeah and then we go to rush valley we get to see winry yay um, we have 
We haven't seen her in a while. Long time no um, see, and yeah. unless you watch the end credits every time in the previous yeah <laughs> previous yeah. end credits. True. Um, and she's calling the the hotel in Central that the Elrics typically stay at that that they do stay at. Um, and they they aren't there. They're headed north. Um, and her boss Garfield, I don't. <laughs> He just, he just amuses me. Like the way he like comes up and is like hanging there, hanging out around her, and and then he, he wants she, the tea, man. He wants yeah. the tea. <laughs> and she she tells him where the where the brother is headed, and he's like, "They're gonna die." It's like, okay. I, in the manga, he says something like, "You know what that means? They're in mortal danger." <laughs> <laughs> he says it more dramatically, like he's trying to get Winry to pretend she's in a romance novel or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sure I'm I'm sure he has his own ship. <laughs> <laughs> probably. He probably listens in on all their phone conversations. There's no privacy in that place. Yeah, yeah. And then Ed and Al, they're we see them back there in in the north, they're hitching a ride with the farmer. Um and he drops he drops him off and, and as he's leaving he asks if Al is auto mail like made of auto mail and he's like, No, he's like, Okay, you should be all right. Um Yeah, which I wondered why Ed in the anime didn't ask, What do you mean? Because I've got auto mail. But in the manga he actually does say, Oh, I have auto mail. Uh the man says that they'd better hurry unless they want to die. And he doesn't really mm-hmm. elaborate on that, but at least Ed got it out there like, Yes, one of us has auto mail. Mm-hmm. And then he also warns them that it's military territory that they're heading into, and but if they stay on the road, they should be fine. And, and then a blizzard then, immediately pulls Yeah, out. yeah, cut to them walking in a blizzard. Um, <laughs> and they're they're complaining, as, as one does in a blizzard, and they're discussing their teacher, who actually trained the North for a month, It's like, oh yeah, she even killed a bear, and Al, I don't know, his reaction is just so funny. He's like, He's very irritated. He's like, what? She didn't do that. No um, way. <laughs> I love um, that because Al's usually kind of like happy-go-lucky. But in this case, he's like, I'm the realist here. No, Ed. She didn't kill a bear. <laughs> Which is kind of funny because like you would think Ed would be the one that's like in a bad mood because he's freezing. And Al yeah. is like, he's fine. But <laughs> that's kind of a little switch. Um, and as they're talking about their teacher, a man, we see like a giant man come up behind them. And at first they think it's a bear. Um, but then he attacks and he has this like super like cool tricked out automobile arm. Um, and he like, yeah, yeah. And he captures Al and uh, like, I don't know. He immediately like starts bragging about his automobile. He's like, it's this model. It is. It can do this and that. It's like he's on an info (laughs) marshal. Uh huh. Yeah, um, and he accuses Ed of being a miserable drachma spy, and Ed is very confused <laughs> by this man, um, and he's trying to fight back, but the guy grabs grabs his um, automail arm with his own, um, and he says, I don't know, I feel like I've heard this line like a million times, he's like, your resistance is futile. I feel um, like I've heard it in Star Wars. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, and I was just, I was actually just watching... <laughs> something today or maybe last night i don't remember i i think i was watching i think i was watching vinland saga and they said like uh, this exact line and i was like mm, yes mm. um anyway uh ed tries to like destroy the guy's arm but he can't transmute it because he doesn't well, know we'll what it's made out, out of but yes yeah yeah because it's not it's not iron like his or he said mm-hmm. iron right yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah, but he, I mean, in the anime, he just goes, stop, stop, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. But I like in the manga, he goes, time out, time out. <laughs> like, he can just <laughs> tap out of the fight. <laughs> um, And then Al, Al comes to the rescue. He throws his head. Um, Use your head, Al. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he throws his head and, and he, he, Ed, like, kind of jams the, jams the guy's arm with, with his, with Al's head. And he escapes. And he says he's he's very concerned about his auto mail because he's like, I, I I hope I die, otherwise Winry's gonna kill me. Yeah, I mean it was his arm was smushed in there for a long time. It's gotta uh-huh. be damaged. But yeah. um <laughs> another manga note, when Ed is freed from the man's auto mail, um 
he he's like run and he and Al try to run away but Ed immediately trips and I think it can be assumed that his automel leg is experiencing the same thing that his arm is experiencing because right before the fight with this man um Ed tried to move his arm after making the arm blade and he he said it hurt and he couldn't move it so mm. um it's yeah his his automel is mal- malfunctioning for some reason I don't know why <laughs> I want to talk about it. I really do, but I have to wait till the next episode. Yes. Um, and so then the, the Briggs mountain guard come up behind them. Um, and they've, they've, and now been effectively captured. And then they see that they are, they have reached the Northern wall. Um, and we see, we see general Olivier Armstrong standing above them, looking very formidable. Um, Isn't she a major general? Maybe. Hang on, I got this. Yeah, I looked that up. I feel like I thought I heard them say General Armstrong, but you could be right. Well, it could be a shortened, it could be a... a, a yeah. <laughs> I got a real life person <laughs> instead. <laughs> <laughs> Olivier. <laughs> Olivier Mira Armstrong. Uh, Major General Armstrong. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But they might just call her General to abbreviate it at times. So... No, no. Yeah. I honestly yeah. don't know much about the differences in military ranking. <laughs> I do not either. You could tell me your rank and I'd be like Private first class. Cool. Sweet. Smell <laughs> good. All right. So this is this this is Armstrong's older sister and Ed and Al's um reactions are like her, we get to hear their inner thoughts and it's very funny. Um Al's like, oh, she looks different. Ed's like not huge. <laughs> yeah, because um Alex Louise Armstrong is just jacked muscle man and Olivier, while she's still imposing and she has a good physique, like I think she's strong physically, she's not like buff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She looks like more of like a tactician and good fighter and very swift on her feet. Mm-hmm. And she orders the boys to be searched. And it would we we get another funny scene because one the one the guy's like, Hey, when he sees Alex like, Hey, he's hollow and and Ed's like, Oh, you noticed. <laughs> <laughs> he just deadpan says it. It's uh, it's great. I and mean, we've got a screenshot um, that hopefully we can post on our Instagram. Yes, yes. If I if I remember, which I have not recently. <laughs> um and then the and the boys, they finally, like, notice, like, how giant the wall is. It is very imposing, just just like Olivier. Yes. Um, and then she, she tells them to come inside, and it's, Ed's, like, and, I don't know, they kind of seem like they're, they're prisoners, and Ed is very, like, what? No, what are you doing? And, and as she gets very scary very fast, um, She's like, I'm going to tear your little body apart. And we see her uh, as the bear and Ed is just a tiny bunny looking yeah. terrified. Okay, it's it's a missed opportunity. But in the manga, she says, I'm going to rip out that little hair antenna. <laughs> <laughs> and I think later I read ahead and later in, in the next chapter, it's like, I don't like that lady. She's starting to rip out my hair antenna. And he's like <laughs> holding his head protectively. That's great. Um. And that is, that's the end of the episode, but then there's a brief end credit scene. Um, we see May and Marco have found the abandoned house that they were searching for, and they unearthed the research notes, and we learned that um, Scar's brother was trying to combine alchemy and alchemy. And that is the end of the episode. Yeah. So we had a couple of voice actor notes. We'll have a lot more next time. I'm still trying Mm -hmm. to sort through them all. But for now, we decided to cover uh, Mr. Garfield, which we we missed the first time he was introduced. Um, And the the man with the automail arm that Ed and Al met, who is a buccaneer. Um, So Garfield is played by Antamir Robinson, who is Terracotta from One Piece, Joe from Detective Conan, and Bob from Fairy Tale. And Buccaneer is played by Phil Parsons, who is um, Tensei Ida from My Hero Academia. That's Tenya, Ida's older brother. Um, Leonard Burns from Fire Force. And 
Kenny Ackerman from <laughs> Attack on Titan and Meg <laughs> told me to do the thing. So here it goes. Kenny! <laughs> Yay! If you know, you know. Yes, we ju- we just watched that episode. That was an awesome <laughs> episode. <laughs> Anyways, uh, mm-hmm. so Garfield, his name. I'm I'm assuming both Garfield and Buccaneer are referred to either as maybe those are their last names, or that could be just like a pseudonym they go by. I don't know, but uh, Garfield. The closest I could find was Garfield with a D. Um, which is of Anglo-Saxon origin. It means grassy land or pasture. And then buccaneer, um, it's more so a word than a name, and it usually refers to a reckless, adventurous person, and that is oftentimes in reference to a pirate. Hmm. It's kind of trash, because he, like, kind of has a piratey for a hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Fake fake arm. Yeah. Yeah. Different environment than a pirate, though, but yeah, that's it's very different. This isn't your average show, so we'll let it slide. <laughs> um, yeah, um, and we had one tracking thing. Uh, Ed destroyed his right glove when he made his arm blade. Uh, not like he needed that glove anyway, because he's got a metal arm, but he could probably pick up the pieces and retransmute it if he needed it. And then animation expertise, uh, just Marco's new look. So, honestly, I think is more disfiguring in the manga than the anime. Uh, this might just be because they, you know, an animated show has a budget, so they can't spend as much time drawing every line on a character's face. But um, in the manga, I think his lips and his teeth are drawn a little differently, showing, like, a little puckering mm. of the skin, showing how much, like, his face has just changed overall. And the first time we saw him in the anime with his his features like they are i well i felt bad for him because like one of his eyes is drooping now and and stuff like that but in all honesty he doesn't look that bad <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah no, I, have, he I have seen worse in manga and anime so oh oh yes and then i guess speaking of that we wanted to to briefly talk about his comment that he made that like he deserves it and it's very i don't know i guess i guess we want to discuss like should you should you try to punish yourself for like the things that you've done done mm. wrong and like do you I think deserve he, that yeah. I don't know cuz he's he's like I mean everybody ah oh, it's so interesting how everybody that was like part of the what happened in Ishval like they all are dealing with it in their own way mm. um and well, the fact ways... of the matter he can never atone for what he's done Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's very noble how he was trying to help others as a doctor in that small town. Like, I honestly, that's probably one of the best courses of actions is dedicating your life to helping others. But mm-hmm. doing it from a place of guilt, you're never going to satisfy yourself because you're mm-hmm. always going to think, what else can I do? As far as him saying, this is the face I deserve. I I don't agree with that line of thinking. I get where, where mm-hmm. he's coming from, though. Punishing yourself, though, I... Yeah, I don't think that's ever a good idea because mentally, he's already been punishing himself. He didn't need anything physical to prove how much, like, remorse he felt over what he'd done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Like, like his, his uh, you know, trying to, to serve other people was, was the better route to go. Um, and it always bothers me when characters are like, Oh, I deserve this because I'm such a bad person. It's and almost, uh, when I always, I always just serving like, in a way. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I always just think like, what you did was wrong, and you need to like own up to it. And you but like, move on you, somehow. yeah, move on. You have to. It's I, just I, a I, I just, spiral. <laughs> yeah, like it's no matter what you do, you you can never make up for what happened. You can just move forward and mm-hmm. and just move forward on your own two legs. Yes, exactly. I was uh, that's what I was thinking of the line from yeah from, from that episode. Um, of course, I'm a bit hypocritical in saying this because, like, if I mess up, I'm going to be thinking about it for days afterwards and just beating myself up over it. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. yeah, I yeah, think I'm, you get better and better I'm, each time. You yeah, know. exactly. I I would say I I'm more of along the lines of it happened. There's nothing I can do about it except move forward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what else are you supposed to do? Uh, yeah, there's... You can't do anything else. Yep. 
Another thing we wanted to talk about was story elements analysis. And we had kind of mentioned this before, but like the reunion of two foes. So Scar versus Kimberly. Uh, it was kind of surprising that Kimberly was deterred so easily. Like we thought this was going to be the battle of the century and he was almost immediately impaled by a pole. I mean, he put up a good fight, like granted, but um, Arakawa errs towards the side of what would be realistic. Scar has been training nonstop while Kimberly has been sitting in jail. And I just watched an analysis video today that I'll probably link on our, on our YouTube, but like, uh, somebody was reviewing the manga and he said the same thing. Like, Arakawa is going towards like realism. It makes sense. You could be disappointed at like the lack of hype from this battle, but honestly, it's just setting up for the future. Mm-hmm. Wow, look at you being so smart. <laughs> I'm just good like that. <laughs> All right. Well, that that's what we had for the for the episode. Um, what was your favorite line, Megan? Mine once again came from Kimberly. I swear he's I he's not my favorite character at all. I really don't like him, but sometimes I just like what he says. But he said, um, ah, yes, death is closing in. One who spreads death and destruction must accept their pursuit. He will never be far from either. But what could be more beautiful than doing work that puts your soul at risk? Because that's what it means to be alive, at least on this battlefield. It was, that was one of those quotable lines where you just kind of get chills. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that line, too. And what was your favorite line? Uh, mine came from Olivier, um, when she says, I don't put much stock in anyone else's opinion of a person. I prefer to judge the people I meet with my own eyes. That's a good rule of thumb. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I, I would say, for the most part, I I agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. What did we learn in this episode? Be careful in the snow. <laughs> okay. Yes. And we, we thought it would be fun to <laughs> to share our worst uh, snow-related injuries. Yes. And we have more snow stories because we both grew up in places that had lots of snow. But we can save those for another time. But yes, mm-hmm. injury-wise, um, I think I was either a sophomore or a junior in high school. I'm going to say I was a junior. And my friends and I decided to go sledding there's this huge sledding hill not too far from my house and um you know I took a plastic saucer down the hill and there was this chunk of ice that formed a little bump so it was like a little jump that you could go down and I went flying off that thing and was holding the saucer underneath me just trying to land safely but when I landed I just like hit a piece of snow and it (gasps) nailed my tailbone and it hurt so bad. I was just laying at the bottom of the hill for a solid minute going, can I move? Am I okay? And I got up and I was like wincing a little bit, but it was fine. But for the next month or maybe even more afterwards, every time I went to class and I tried to sit down at my desk or my table, I'd be wincing and I, I would like fall into my chair because I couldn't do the sitting motion properly. Uh, okay, I'm dumb because. I wrote down two, but I realized I also literally broke my hand. (laughs) (laughs) So which one should I share? Broken bones are always a good story. Uh, Yeah. Makes me look seem so dumb because I am dumb. Okay, whatever. (laughs) It's fine. to die. (laughs) (laughs) So when I was, mm, I don't remember how old I was, but I was sledding and I was walking. I was in elementary school, I'm pretty sure. I was walking up the the hill in my backyard which was coated in ice and my parents many times were like don't walk up the hill in you know when it's super icy but I was a genius and I was like it'll be fine and (laughs) it was last words (laughs) yeah and I fell and I like hit my chin on the ice and my one of my front teeth went through my lip and so that was that was fun. And I have I have a scar from that. <clears throat> um and then the other one. Also, I guys, I am a genius. In case you're in case you're wondering. Well actually yeah, maybe just lack common common sense. <laughs> but I was I was sledding 
at a friend's house and we were um sledding into a group of trees <laughs> and, and i and like for some reason I, I like went down the hill and like my hand was like outside of the sled and so i like yeah i went i my hand hit the tree and like went totally like mm. backwards mm. and i broke like the the very like middle bone ah, in my hand <laughs> Which, yeah. That's hard to break. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it is. But I managed to do it. And I didn't realize that I had broken it for like four days. So I didn't get a cast on until like four days later. You're tough. <laughs> so awesome. that was all, all when you were sledding. Sledding is dangerous, guys. Um, Who pushed the story forward in this episode? Kimberly did. He confronted Scar and opened up old wounds. Thanks for that, Kimball. Yes, opening up old wounds is the best. We like drama on this show. <laughs> yes. All right. Next week, um, we will have a, another bonus episode, which we are super excited about. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to have guests. Uh, from the Haiku Summit podcast, uh, Marley and Hannah are going to be on our podcast next week. And we're just yes. going to talk about Haiku, FMA, and just like anime stuff in stuff general. Stuff in general. Yeah. 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 We're, we're so pumped for it. Um, yeah. We started listening to their podcast before we even started this one. So this has been a dream for a while. Yes. <laughs> This is our actually the whole reason why we why we started this podcast. <laughs> well, I give it a good twenty five percent. Yeah, yeah. All right. But yeah, be sure to listen to their podcast, the Haiku Summit. It's also on Spotify and probably Apple Podcasts too. I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah, so we're looking forward right. to it, and we hope you're looking forward to it. Um, that's all we've got for this episode, and we will be back next week with another episode and uh, another guest who yeah all right all right uh, bye <laughs> bye <laughs>